Hello there and welcome along as always to girls, boys and as always the others. Uh, what we're going to do today is we have finished the unit. Woo! Although that did mean that we had an end of unit test. So in theory everyone's done the end of unit test now. So what we're going to do is have a look through the answers. Okay, so the end of unit test was set through Edmodo. Uh, pretty much all the questions were multiple choice, true or false, uh, and one or two fill in the blanks. And the real exam, obviously, there'll be extended answers, or, or at least there used to be. Um, so please don't get used to things being multiple choice because that might not actually be the case. Okay then, so let's have a look through this. This was obviously set on Edmodo. Uh, this is a printout version that I can get through Edmodo, although I usually forget how to do it. Um, I've managed to remember so I've got this version now so uh, name at the top you wouldn't have to put the name on the top but uh, let's just go uh, the answers um, okay so which gas is present as 21% in the Earth's atmosphere? Uh, nitrogen is around 78-79% carbon dioxide is 0.04% the oxygen is 21%, so hopefully you went for oxygen. When I'm dealing with multiple choices, that's what I like to do. I like to rule out everything and just annotate next to it, just because it helps me understand why some of the answers cannot be uh, the right answer. So next one is fill in the blank. Natural process which produces oxygen in the atmosphere. Now, a lot of natural processes produce carbon dioxide, or even sulfur dioxide in some cases. One of the only ones that produces oxygen is the one that plants do, and it is photosynthesis. Now remember, Edmodo is awesome at a whole range of different things. It is not awesome at checking you lot have got your spelling right. So if you've written photosynthesis, but then misspelt it, Edmodo will have automatically marked it wrong. OK, so you're very welcome to have a look back at your test to see if you did deserve to get that mark. Question three, what number will I get if I correctly convert centimetre cubed, so 25 centimetre cubed, into decimeter cubed. To get from centimeter cubed to decimeter cubed is divide by a thousand. Now we don't often introduce that concept as early as we have right now. Usually we save it for doing uh, titration calculations which we'll talk about another time. Um, but I thought well why not? The earlier we get to practice it the earlier you get better at it hopefully. So centimeter cubed to decimeter cubed is divide by a thousand. So if I started with 25, and what we do is if you divide by a thousand, you're moving the decimal place three places. So let's go one, two, three. So your decimal place will be there now under the little arc there. I'm going to put a zero and a zero in front of it just because that's how usually we work with decimals. Okay, so it should be zero point. 0 0.025, which is the bottom option. We have two true or false questions next. Now, in all the time that I've been looking at exams, which is quite a long time now, um, I've never seen a sort of true or false. So I only made these ones worth 0 0.5 of a mark because you wouldn't get a mark for this on a real exam. So let's have a look. Question four. Is the following statement true or false? Greenhouse gases absorb radiation from the sun directly. No, it's the idea of them. So Earth, sun, radiation goes towards the Earth, <clears throat> goes towards the Earth. It is absorbed and then re-emitted at a lower energy and it's sort of the re-emitted infrared radiation which gets stuck in the greenhouse gases there so it does not absorb the radiation from the sun directly so that would be false now five is the following statement true or false Farm animals are significant cause of greenhouse gas production. They, well, cows in particular, 
release a lot of methane uh, and obviously there's the carbon dioxide levels associated with it as well yeah definitely cows in particular and uh, as we said in the lessons rice fields or rice paddies they sometimes are called they do give off uh, a lot of greenhouse gas emissions there now i appreciate um, a rice plant is not an animal but i was just thinking farm there okay six which of the following does not decrease so we're looking for something which does not actively decrease our carbon footprint um emission based taxes well that basically discourages people from using carbon emitting things in the first place so that kind of would uh capturing carbon and store it underground that would definitely reduce it so that's that one's spot on uh, planting more trees would definitely reduce it so that one's spot on uh, using an electric car charged from electricity produced by burning so that is going to add co2 to the atmosphere that's a c apparently uh so it yeah it's going to be that bottom one there i was kind of tempted for the top one because that doesn't directly reduce it um but whereas this one actively increases it so it, it's going to be the fourth one there question seven oh we're four points Worth four points. Uh, didn't mean to make it worth four points. Ooh, that's very over generous there. Uh, which of these is an atmospheric pro pollutant produced in the combustion engine in the car? Right. Well, in a car, what have we got? We've got the hydrocarbon fuel and we've got essentially the air, which is obviously nitrogen, oxygen and a few other things as well. So as products, what we're going to get, well, whenever you have a combustion reaction, combustion, so you have a fuel plus oxygen, you're always going to get carbon dioxide and water unless co incomplete combustion is taking place, in which case you'll get carbon monoxide and carbon particulates, i.e. soot. So we're definitely going to get carbon dioxide for sure. Um, hydrogen First off, isn't an atmospheric pollutant, uh, and second off, would not be produced in that, so it cannot be hydrogen. Um, what other elements we've got here? So we've got hydrogen and carbon, oxygen, ooh, nitrogen. We discussed the idea of nitrogen dioxide, trioxide, dinitrogen, something oxide. Um, that is, when it reacts with oxygen, that creates smog and it's the high temperatures in the car engine that make that happen so nitrogen oxides would be there as well um what's our last over option uh methane methane is a fuel so it's not going to be a product it's going to be a reactant so it cannot be methane okay so the four points there um, as i say far too generous you get one point for getting that one right you get one point for getting that one right you get one point for leaving that one blank and another point for leaving that one blank that's just how edmodo's choosing to mark it fair enough uh question eight calculations the gas calculations i know lots of you struggled with this and i told you not to worry about it too much we are going to come back to this okay so don't worry too much if you struggled So our formula triangle for this is moles times 24 or 24,000, depending on if it's centimetre cubed or decimetre cubed. Uh, and that will get you the volume. So that is our formula triangle. OK, so if we've got an approximate volume of 800, sorry, of 8,000 centimetre cubed, calculate the number of moles. So we're going to do... 8,000 and because it's in centimetre cubed the bottom number needs to be 24,000 instead of 24 uh, centimetre cubed so 8,000 divided by 24,000 is 0 0.3 recurring moles which matches to that option there okay so the 8,000 divided by the 24,000 boom sorted 
<clears throat> so, uh, number nine, calculate the volume of CO2 produced in decimeter cubed when 0 0.5 mole of that thing undergoes thermal decomposition. Okay, so we're calculating the volume of this when we've got 0 0.5 of that. Well, don't forget, what we did for these is if you had one of the CuCO3, you'd have one of the CO2 thing. So if there's 0 0.5, then you've automatically got 0 0.5 of that one. Um, and then it's just a case of applying the formula triangle from before. So the volume is going to equal the moles uh, times by 24. It's asked for it in decimeter cubed, so I'm going to leave it as 24. The moles was 0 0.5. 0 0.5 times by 24 times in by 0 0.5 is a is the same as dividing by 2 so 12 uh, and it's the third option there Ten. which of the following pairs are greenhouse gases uh, carbon dioxide is carbon particulates aren't so it can't be that one nitrogen isn't but methane is but that one has only got one so it can't be that one uh, methane is carbon dioxide is so it's going to definitely be this one let's just rule out the final one just in case carbon dioxide is argon isn't so yeah so our main greenhouse gases that we are always going to be looking for are co2 i.e carbon dioxide ch4 which is methane, uh, water, H2O. Those are the main three that we'll be keeping our eyes out for uh, when it does come to test exams and things like that. And for reducing our impact on global warming, you know, just in life as well. Uh, okay, what do most scientists base their beliefs about climate change on? One point. Research by oil companies? No, if they did, that is uh, called because the uh, oil companies are going to have a significant bias. They obviously want to keep burning oil, therefore they're going to keep wanting to give off emissions and then that's going to damage the planet. So if we were to just use the word of the oil companies, that would be a very bad idea. What we need is something called peer-reviewed evidence. So that means other people have checked it, other scientists. So yes, definitely that. Uh, let's just cancel out the other ones. Public opinion it properly does my nutting when on the news they're reporting about something quite serious and then all of a sudden they get some Karen from the street of what do you think about the implications, long-term implications of genetically modified food? And this Karen's like, yeah, well, back in my day, I used to think that genetically modified meant I was going to get superpowers. I always used to eat those genetically modified crops. I never got beaten on superpowers. No. <laughs> so public opinion. Um, whilst interesting to get the points of view of everyone, uh, it's not scientifically valid at all. Corona beer gives you coronavirus. No! <sighs> so public opinion. No. Newspaper articles, um, I've discussed this with some of you before, back when we were still in school. Newspapers, in the nicest possible way, this is going to sound strange, they are no longer written to inform, if we think about forms of writing from uh, an English literature, literacy, whatever, uh, perspective. Newspapers are written to entertain. OK, if you didn't believe that before all this coronavirus stuff, I hope you do believe it now. For newspapers, what matters to them is the sales. OK, whether that be sales through the actual paper itself or getting clicks and follows on a digital media. They are there for entertainment purposes. You see entertaining headlines such as cool found for coronavirus. And what it actually is, is they've started trialing a drug which is showing some signs of working. It's not a cure yet. It's a work in progress.
but it's more entertaining and it gets more follows and likes and clicks and whatever if the headline is striking and it pulls you in. It, it's clickbait, okay? It, that's that's all that it is, clickbait. Okay, so newspaper articles are not a good source of information for climate change. So scientists are definitely not going to use sort of in Daily Mail, the Sun, the rest of them for informing them about a really complicated idea like climate change. So definitely not. Number 12, as I just alluded to, uh, it is tricky to be uh, certain about the effect of greenhouse gases. Um, is it because modern cars produce less of the greenhouse gases? Well, modern cars do produce less greenhouse gases, um, most of them anyway. But that won't help us figure out the certainty of it, so no, not that. There is little scientific evidence, uh, quite to the contrary. There is a heck of a lot of scientific evidence. In fact, too much. So no, because the global climate system is a very complex. There is so much data and so many different variables. That's what makes it difficult to understand. So not that there's little scientific evidence. There is too much scientific evidence and some of it works together and some of them works against it and it's really tricky to figure out. Um, renewable energy is very unreliable. Some forms of renewable energy are quite unreliable but not all of them um, and that won't help us understand the greenhouse gases anymore so that one's not even relevant. Okay question 13. Now I know some of you struggled with question 13 but because um, Edmodo wasn't doing the drag and drop sensibly. Sometimes it works perfectly, other times it doesn't. Um, it's worse on phones and uh, Internet Explorer. Um, but sometimes it works. Usually it works. Unfortunately, some of you uh, it didn't work for. But what's important is we are actually learning from this process. OK, so even if you didn't weren't able to do this, have a think about what you would have put and see if you got it right. Okay, so uh, this was actually adapted from a six mark question. Um, I wanted you to be able to have a go at a six mark question, but obviously not extended writing because that takes a heck of a lot of marking and there's a heck of a lot of you. So I kind of broke it down this way instead. So you'd have to discuss um, these different things about why oxygen increased, carbon dioxide decreased, nitrogen increased, oceans forming, uh, and a few different ways of the carbon dioxide increasing. So, sorry, carbon dioxide decreasing. So what I did is wrote a little list there and you had to match up to the correct reason. Now, there were more options available than there were um, questions to match it to just because I wanted you really really thinking about this. So oxygen increased because well the process that creates oxygen or converts oxygen from one form to another anyway is photosynthesis. So let's see if any one of these uh, there we go number two. So it could be number two but oxygen increased because developed and used carbon dioxide for photosynthesis that doesn't necessarily kind of flow as a sentence so let's just keep looking for another option um it wasn't released when plants would decay living things do breathe it in but that wouldn't increase the quantity of oxygen that would decrease it uh, five the plants and algae developed used carbon dioxide for photosynthesis slash growth and gave this off as a waste product that's the one it's going to be so number five and what i'm going to do at this point is just kind of scribble out the ones that i've already used so then i don't accidentally reuse them okay carbon dioxide decreased because plants i know this looks like a better match for number two plants developed and used carbon dioxide for photosynthesis growing producing oxygen yep i like number two for that one scribble out number two because i've used that now nitrogen increased because now i did say we didn't have to necessarily have to talk about nitrogen but hey ho let's have a look um it can't be number one because that doesn't make sense because in sedimentary carbonate rocks or fossil fuel like the sentence just doesn't make sense nitrogen increased because it was released when plants decay no 
living things began to breathe it in. No, definitely not. We, we breathe in oxygen. I mean, we do happen to breathe in nitrogen as well because it's part of the air, but we don't do anything with it uh, because dissolved into bodies of... That doesn't make any sense. Nitrogen increased because volcanoes emitted this gas and ammonia, now ammonia has got nitrogen in, reacted with oxygen to produce this gas. That makes sense. Uh, let's just cancel out the other ones just in case. I do think it's seven. Let's put seven. Um, there were no more volcanoes. No. Nitrogen fixing bacteria had not yet evolved. That means it would decrease. Anyway, we've not talked about nitrogen fixing bacteria. So actually, I'm just going to scribble it out because me you might have discussed that in biology but that's not for us uh earth began to cool so condensation would happen that's going to be something to do with water so no okay next option oh <laughs> the oceans form because the earth began to cool so condensation could happen that was convenient there we go so that one's going to be number 10 um ba -ba -ba -ba. carbon dioxide decreased because it was locked up so what might it be locked up into oh, before i do that let's just uh, cancel out number 10 so we don't reuse that by accident um okay so carbon dioxide decreased because it was locked up there were no more volcanoes just doesn't make sense um and we've used seven, so let's get rid of that one. Forgot to get rid of some seven. Uh, dissolved into bodies of water. Not convinced on that one. Living things began to breathe it in. That's nothing to do with locked up. Released would increase it rather than decrease it. Number one is going to be to sedimentary rocks slash carbonate rocks and or fossil fuels so that's going to match to number one uh carbon dioxide decreased because it is soluble okay soluble means it can dissolve into specific solutions usually water so we need something to do with water there uh, let's have a look at the options we've got left over it was really yeah can't be that can't be that dissolved there we go dissolved into bodies of water such as the oceans so yeah that one's going to be number six um and then we've not used number eight because there was no need okay so let's just zoom out there again so super recap there the Oxygen increased because, there it is, plants and algae developed and used carbon dioxide for photosynthesis and gave this off as a waste product. So that's the oxygen there. Carbon dioxide decreased because plants developed and used carbon dioxide for photosynthesis slash growth uh, and gave Carbon dioxide decreased because plants developed and used carbon dioxide for photosynthesis slash growing producing oxygen. E carbon dioxide decreased because plants developed and used carbon dioxide for photosynthesis and growth and then they produced oxygen. Yep, so that one makes sense. Uh, so nit nitrogen increased because and that matched to number seven which number seven said volcanoes emitted this gas and ammonia reacted with oxygen to produce this gas oceans formed because the earth began to cool so condensation could happen carbon dioxide decreased because it was locked up in sedimentary slash carbonate rocks and or fossil fuels and carbon dioxide decreased because it is soluble so it dissolved into bodies of water such as the oceans okay so that is a little bit of the carbon cycle um, but also how the atmosphere has changed over time so lesson two and 
five, I think, something like that. Let's keep going, 14. Okay, diesel fuels contain hydrocarbons, they do. Uh, diesel engines are poorly maintained. The amount, ugh, volume of oxygen reaching them to burn the fuel completely might be too low. This is called incomplete combustion. Okay, there are two forms of combustion. There's complete combustion and incomplete combustion. Complete combustion just gets you CO2 and H2O. Incomplete combustion gets you carbon monoxide, carbon particulates, i.e. soot, and water. There is no such thing as partial combustion, activation combustion, and hydrocarbon combustion is just fuel burning. So that's that's just linking back to this here, but that, that wouldn't be the form of combustion. It's complete or incomplete. 15 was a fill in the blanks but with no um like word bank for you to use no clue so let's have a look at this together name two harmful products of incomplete combustion of diesel fuel give the harmful effects of each product so something something is a t something gas more commonly known as the silent killer well the silent killer is carbon monoxide so this is going to be so this is going to be carbon for the first space monoxide for the second space is a something gas known as the silent killer and it begins with t so what we needed to put after the t was oxic because it is a toxic gas that's why it kills people unfortunately um so oxic need to be in there not toxic if that makes sense so if you did just put toxic again you've written t -t oxic <laughs> um you, you can still have the mark there okay just men make a mental note of that uh c something p something more commonly known as s something we've already mentioned this here they are um so incomplete combustion we did actually show i did just give you the little equation for that just up there we've talked about carbon monoxide uh that's your other product there that is carbon or arbon is what you should have written in the uh space carbon particulates um, I imagine not many of you getting that mark there because the spelling for it is a bit tricky and if you weren't listening carefully, you wouldn't necessarily have picked up that word. Uh, so carbon particulates, more commonly known as soot. So oot is all you needed to write there. This causes global dimming. all heard of global warming um, but global dimming is what is caused by carbon particulates uh, and we talked about that and how like it could build up either in clouds or on plants or in buildings and things like that and when it builds up in the clouds and on plants the plants can't do photosynthesis and if they can't do photosynthesis there's no producers in the food chains the food webs the ecosystem is screwed so it is particularly harmful to plant life and therefore everything else as well eventually okay so that was question 15 uh question 16 was another fill in the blank but it was um i gave you a, like a word bank to help you out a little bit there One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. sorry yeah so question 15 uh you got 0.5 of a mark for each box so there's eight little boxes in total four marks half a mark for each one uh, so 16 was a fill in the blank as well uh, but i gave you a word bank here at the bottom not that it's shown particularly well on this sort of format so there's a little word bank there and we just had to use some of them not necessarily all of them to help you fill that in okay so fill in the blanks to help 
fill in the blanks to explain what happens in the greenhouse effect. So the greenhouse effect, I told you a little silly way of remembering it. Um, short, ugly violet. Always really irritates by choice. So that was just our silly way of remembering. Short, ugly violet always really irritates Lucy in temper tantrums by choice, if you want to include that as well. So what did that actually stand for? That stood for short waves coming towards the earth in the form of UV or ultraviolet, that they were absorbed and then re re emitted as infrared. Sometimes they put a hyphen in, sometimes they don't. Uh, infrared, which is a longer form of radiation, which increases the temperature Um, because it is trapped by CO2. Okay, that was, uh, I don't know how much easier it made it to remember it, but th that was kind of a silly way to help you remember it, hopefully. Uh, so short UV, absorbed, re-emitted, infrared is a longer wave than uh, the UV is, uh, which increases the temperature because the infrared is trapped by CO2. So, Let's get this into the answer. The sun gives off short, and we've used short, there it is, from our word bank, waves of radiation in the form of ultra for one space, violet for the other. That was in the word bank. Where is it? Uh, ultraviolet. There it is. So we've used both of those. Not necessarily going to use everything in the word bank, but let's just cancel them out as we go. This travels towards the earth and enters the atmosphere. This radiation is absorbed first and then re-emitted The spellings were all given to you in the word bank, so there's no excuse there, uh, except for when I put absorb instead of absorbed. So if you put absorb there instead of absorbed, that's fine. That's my fault. Don't worry about that too much. You can give yourself that mark. Uh, so the sun gives off short, short waves of radiation in the form of ultraviolet. This travels towards the earth and enters the atmosphere. The radiation is absorbed and then re-emitted as, and there's a hyphen there, so the only one with a hyphen in was the infrared, so we're going to go infrared, cancel that out because we've used that, radiation, which is a something er, well it's either going to be short er or long er, isn't it, so let's go long er. Uh, than it was before. When this wave hits greenhouse gases, the energy of the waves becomes trapped. Yeah, trapped is the next on our remembering thing. And that makes sense in terms of the sentence. In our atmosphere and causes and something in global temperature, I'm going to go increase. So let's get rid of increase in global temperature. And then that's the word. OK, so uh, this, again, was adapted from a six mark exam question. Um, and those are the key points that you'd have to write in. OK, so short, ugly, violet always really irritates Lucy in temper tantrums by choice. That short UV is absorbed and then re-emitted by as infrared radiation, which is longer than the UV radiation, uh, longer wavelength, I should say. So that increases the temperature because it is trapped by greenhouse gases such as CO2. 
That is a very common exam question, both in chemistry. Uh, I think it comes up in physics. I'm pretty sure it's come up in geography once or twice. Uh, it might have even come up in biology. OK, get this nailed. OK. OK, so that was the test and that is the test reviewed. So let's ha uh, see how people did in general. Uh, this is just so you know your kind of average and where we sit. Uh, the highest score was 28 out of 30 points. That's crazy. So massive well done uh, to whoever that was. There might be a few of you. I've not checked yet. Uh, the median score, so the sort of middle-ish score, was 71%, 22 out of 30. Again, that's very good. Um, and then the average score was 21 out of 30, which is 69%. Really, really cool. Uh, let's see what people struggled with the most. Uh, what's that one? Ah, okay, yeah, yeah. You might not have realised uh, that you could click two boxes there. So yeah, that that's fair enough. Um, let's see. Uh, Thirteen. 13 was the sort of drag and drop one. Uh, this person's here. I don't even know whose this is. Um, I mean, they've got a lot of it right. So you know what? Fair enough to you. Um, that was a kind of tricky question. Uh, 15. I'm going to guess. Oh, I mean, this person just didn't attempt it at all. So it's, it might have been that their computer blacked out. Um, that happens sometimes. Uh, and 16. Oh, yeah, this, this person as well. It kind of, they didn't fill it in. Uh, this example here, they've pretty much, in fact, they have got it. It's just the idea that Edmodo won't recognise the difference between that and that. So they would have got those two marks there. OK, so that is it. Please do double check through your test. Uh, I think I've unlocked it now so you can see which answers, answers you've got right and wrong. Um, check back and, and see if any of yours would have been accepted anyway. Uh, and then what we're going to do uh, for now that is it. Next time we are starting a new unit and it's a unit for which you will need a calculator. Masses and moles. That'll do for now, ladies, gents, girls, boys and others. Be gone, minions of science. Be gone!